Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. In this video, we're going to go over 12 things that you should keep in mind when running underground plumbing. We are working on an agricultural building that has a bathroom, a few different sinks, as well as a mechanical room. So this video should cover quite a few of the items that you would see before having the concrete poured over a slab on grade installation. Let's go through those points one at a time. The trenches for the water lines are super easy because we didn't have to do any grading coming across. It was just super straightforward for that. But all of the PVC has to be sloped. So we had our transit, we call it, or our laser uh, set up so that it was sloping 2% to this direction and 2% out that direction. And that gives you about a quarter inch per foot, which is what we want to shoot for. So all of this was shot with that. And then you just slowly move your way along and keep checking it as you dig these trenches. So some of it was done by hand and some of it was done with the machine. That's probably one of the most tedious parts of the process is getting everything set to the correct slope. Now one interesting thing is when you have your laser set to 2% in one direction, you have to remember that like if you come off of the drain going the opposite direction, you don't want to follow the laser because then you'll end up sloping that pipe over there down that direction, which is obviously not good. So you have to be aware of how it is all set up and the way it is working. The first item we're going to look at is this floor drain right here. Now this is an emergency use floor drain and the way you can tell that it is an emergency use floor drain is this thing is not vented specifically or separately uh, from the rest of the plumbing system. However, it is attached to a vented brain. In most areas, they allow you to have an emergency use floor drain that is unvented as long as the pipe going from the vented branch or main to the floor drain is less than 25 feet. So that's the first thing you can keep in mind. If, however, you're going to use this as a receptor for even condensate or anything that you're going to permanently anticipate water going into this, then it does need to be vented and it needs to have a vent within the requirement for two inch. I believe it's five feet. So you would have to have a vent coming off the top of this and you would not be allowed to offset this down. You'd have to come horizontally off you with your standard slope and within five feet you have to come off with a T and uh, vent that floor drain. And the limitation with that then is that you can't really have a floor drain out in the middle of a room if you want to vent it because you need to have it within five feet of a wall to be able to bring that vent up. So you can see right here we've just used some tie wire to go around there and cinch it up really nice and tight. You want to get this tight up against this to where the rebar is not going to slip. Sometimes these things can get knocked around and end up out of position. So depending on the situation, you can even add additional support like if you wanted to. Um, but usually you're good to go as long as you get one quality piece of rebar, pounded down a good distance, and then tied off to your floor drain. The second item I'm going to point out is this uh, drain right over here. This is actually going to be where we're going to have a stand pipe coming out of the wall. Kind of similar to what you would have with a washing machine. With a washer and dryer you have a washer box built into the wall but in this case we're going to bring it out here and there's just going to be a trap exposed with like an 18 inch piece of two inch coming up off of that and that's going to allow us to dump a few different things into it. It's going to be a catch for condensate for a couple of boilers that are going to mount here on the wall as well as the water softener drain and reverse osmosis drain. So if you don't want to have pipes going across the floor to the floor drain, which technically wouldn't be allowed anyway since this is an emergency use floor drain, then you need to make sure that you have a stand pipe planned for. Right over here we have a three inch pipe coming up out of the ground. This is our main clean out. This three inch pipe continues from here all the way out the end of the building, way down over there. And you need to have a main clean out, especially with underground applications. You're not allowed to reduce it. So over there, technically up here we could have gotten by with just two inch in this area. But if we would have put a three inch by two inch reducer over here to allow us to have this be two inch down here, that would have been a code violation in our area because you need to have your main sewer drain be undiminished in size until you have a proper main clean out. So that's why we just let, ran this in three inch all the way over to here and this is going to be the clean out. Another thing to point out is that all these pipes are stubbed up extra far uh, for the concrete. The floor level is right here. This is our grade board. That is going to set or determine the height of the cement right over here. Then we can trim this down if needed, if we want to. But you always leave them sticking up a little bit higher during the concrete pouring 
process. So that's the mechanical room right over there that we are in. Now this is a hallway and over here we have an office space. Now you would think that an office space really wouldn't have much for plumbing in it, but keep in mind if you ever want to have a sink or a spot to have a coffee pot, maybe a little mini fridge and just a beverage station or lunch corner, you need to have the ability to have water and a drain for being able to install a sink. You can see we have another emergency use floor drain right here. This isn't gonna have any permanent water going into it, so it's fine to be an emergency use one with an offset going down. As you've already noticed, we brought water lines from our mechanical room right over there, and we've dove down under the floor and come back up over here right next to the drain for our sink. Now what we've got here is a hot and a cold and we have a third pipe and this is actually going to be for reverse osmosis. We went ahead and just ran a half inch line for that even though it's a little bit larger. It's not really going to waste any water in the long term because you only fill it once with RO and then you're good to go. This just gives you a little bit more options if you ever wanted to use it for something else like a hard water tap or something like that you have that third line there for that purpose but right now hot cold and reverse osmosis and i'll address it right now uh, this hot line is not insulated and we did that on purpose uh, basically this sink is not going to be used very much every time you use it you're pretty much going to have to purge the cold water out of the line so Insulating it would not have made much of a difference, but optionally we could have put some insulation on that through the ground So you can comment down below was it totally stupid not to put insulation on that That's up to you guys to decide but we did discuss it with the property owner and they decided to just skip it in this case and I'll talk about this little stand here because I think it turned out kind of cool uh, We have a piece of treated wood and we drilled three holes in it for our sleeves coming up and that keeps them nice and rigid and allows us to stand here while the concrete is being poured and these things aren't just flopping around everywhere. We also took some rebar then and drilled some holes for that half inch rebar to go down into the ground. That turned out really nice to be able to hold this so that it's not gonna be tipping over. And then we used another two by four right up here on the top to keep all of those in line. And you can see we've got them all marked for what they are. So here's our office sink like we were just looking at. This goes to the lavatory or the sink in the bathroom. So that's right over there. And then we're actually gonna tee off of that line after the concrete is done and run our cold water line over to the toilet. We'll go talk about the bathroom here in a minute. And then we have a larger line going to the urinal and the reason we need that is you need a higher volume of water for a flushometer. So one of those lever valves that you use uh, with a typical urinal requires a higher volume of water. So we ran a one inch PEX line over to that location. And then this is just labeled vet room. This is a longer run and you can see we are going into a piece of four inch uh, corrugated tile. And we're just using that as a sleeve even though it's not technically required. You can direct bury your PEX, but you do need to protect it coming up through the cement as you've uh, already seen. We're not just letting the PEX just come up out of the ground. We are using sleeves uh, where it comes out of the dirt. But then over here, we're, we're running it in this corrugated tile all the way across for a couple different reasons. Number one is that this run um, is going to a room that's kind of separate over there. And so if we needed to replace those lines, it would be very difficult to get them in after the fact. It really needs to go underground. That is the best way to do it. And by protecting it a little bit more, it's less likely to be damaged. And if one does get damaged or one fails, we can pull a new one in. Corrugated tile is not necessarily the fanciest option for our sleeve, um, but the reason for running that is it's what we had handy, it's relatively affordable and readily available. But you could run some kind of a PVC product with a smooth inside, which would make it a little bit easier for pulling stuff through it. But something is better than nothing. I'll show you a little bit of footage of us pulling the those lines through our sleeve all the way across or through our tile. And uh, that was quite a process, so let's check that out. So we've got it all rigged up here. Our fish tape has been pushed through our corrugated four inch drain tile and now we are ready to pull our three lines as well as an additional rope into the pipe. We're gonna leave that rope there so if you ever wanna pull something additional through there, it's super easy to do because the rope is already laying there for that purpose. So here we go. If you guys have found this video to be helpful so far, there's only one thing I ask you to do in return and that's just hit that thumbs up button. It really helps the video out a whole bunch. That's all there is to it. So thankfully that went pretty well uh, for the most part. What do you think, Simeon? 
I think it's good. What did you do to the top of all the pieces of PVC? I put tape on them. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's uh, duct tape on top of all of these and that's because otherwise concrete and gravel and who knows what else might end up falling into them so all of our lines are taped off we might even come back and add a little bit more on these just to make sure nothing goes into there those aren't as big of a concern as the drains are though marking out where your walls are is extremely important so that you don't end up accidentally putting your pipes on the wrong side of the wall or just slightly out of the wall. This is uh, going to be actually wider than a 2x6 wall over here, so this is a pretty easy wall to get these pipes coming up in. So uh, right here, I'll just kind of explain the bathroom layout. There's going to be a door coming in right here, and then sink or vanity right here, probably like a 36 inch vanity, and then the urinal, and then the water closet or toilet right down there on the end. Not much really to see over here for the sink. This top piece right here is actually separate. I don't know if you can see that or not. What that does is once this, once the concrete is poured, we can pull this tape back off and this top section right here, for some reason the camera keeps thinking that that wheel is a person's face. So it keeps focusing over there. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Simeon. When we pull this uh, top sleeve off here, that will allow us to access this other piece of pipe for the actual drain because we got a glue fitting on there but I wanted this to be protected up a little bit higher for now so when we come back to work on this we'll just cut the tape and pull that top section off and we did that that same thing a few different places I'm sure most of you are aware but the way venting works is basically all we do right now is the drain going down and over and the vent will come off the top of the T coming out of the wall for this sink same thing is true for our standpipe over there and any other receptor for the most part with the exception of the toilet over here which we'll get to in just a second. But we've got another floor drain here in the middle. This is set one inch below the grade of the rest of the concrete so there'll be a little bit of slope to this location. But that is kind of a preferential thing. Ask your concrete guy, usually they don't like them to be super uh, low because that's kind of a pain to be able to figure out. But these are set one inch down from the top of the concrete which is this string right here. Not much else to talk about with the urinal. That's uh, pretty straightforward. We'll have our drain coming out of the wall here, vent going up, and then we've got our larger line for our flushometer to work properly. Our toilet will be located right here, our water closet. And the interesting thing about this, if you haven't seen this before, is this is like a closet elbow or basically a three inch by four inch 90. And this is one of the few exceptions that there are for going from a larger size pipe to a smaller size pipe. The only reason that this exists is for this application where we can't really set our flange up here because our flange is going to be up here. If we set this right now, it'd be impossible for them to pour concrete around it. Or if they did, it would be a huge disaster. What we do is stub this four inch piece up and then this will just get cut off after the concrete is dry. I know I'm probably getting my concrete and cement terms mixed up, so correct me in the comment section. Anyway, once this is cut off, this fitting is actually designed so that it can go inside of a four inch pipe. The outside of this is the right size to just glue directly into this. So once that's cut off flush with the floor, we glue that in and we're good to go. Now because of the way a toilet is designed and the way the trap is integral to the toilet, we actually have to vent this under the ground right here. So you can see it goes down and over and right there we have a pipe coming off of our three inch and that is going to go all the way continuous through the roof is the way uh, system is typically designed and that's what we oftentimes would refer to as the main stack. That is the primary vent for the toilet and the primary vent for really the entire plumbing system for this portion of it anyway. All the rest of these fixtures, there aren't any vents coming from under the ground. It's just for the toilet in this particular situation. An exception would be if you had like a floor drain that was for a shower, then that vent would be coming out of the floor for that particular floor drain. Now coming back over here, we've you can see we now have two three inch pipes and that's because we are separating the sinks and the floor drains and the standpipes from the toilet and urinal 
waste. So those black water essentially on the left, gray water on the right, and that is going to allow those to be processed separately outside. So depending on the situation, a lot of times these would actually just be tied together in most situations, honestly, but in this case, it was needed to separate them. So again, all this is set to about 2% slope, and that ends up being a quarter inch per foot. Over here, we're adding a couple more things. This is Darren and my coworker, Ben. He's got the most experience from all of us, so we're kind of under his wing today. And there's Ruben. Oh my, what happened right there? Didn't want me to be in Who did that? Right there. <laughs> was that actually you, Darren? What are you talking about? Look it! Look it! I'm just kidding, that was me. Oh. Do you not see it? Look over here. He saw it, <laughs> and he told me that I should have pointed the pipe down. This is the way Ben does it. And so. You have to get the primer so it extends slightly out past the edge of the fitting because you do have to be able to see that the fitting was properly primed. Um, but you don't have to prime the entire pipe all the way. The inspector would be able to see the primer from an aerial yeah. shot. Yeah, <laughs> from his drone. Yeah, or... Helicopter. So you take your primer and you make sure you get a really nice coating all the way around the inside of your fitting. I usually start with the female side first because it's usually pretty easy to set the fitting off to the side and out of the way. Always hold your fitting horizontal like I'm doing right here because if you don't, you might end up dumping primer all down the side of the fitting, which looks terrible. I'll do this side. Now we want to go back about the same amount as the fitting is, as the fitting will, and a little bit further because you want to be able to see, or the inspector wants to be able to see, that the fitting was actually primed. So that's plenty far. Depending on who you ask, maybe it's a little too far because our, our fitting's gonna come to about there. So we'll have like a quarter inch of exposed primed pipe. Same thing applies here. Put the primer on while the pipe is in a horizontal position. Should also mention that you should bevel the edges of the pipe, or uh, chamfer, or deburr, or whatever you want to call it. Here's a good example of that bevel I was talking about, right on the edge of this, that you want to create. Basically, if you don't have this beveled a little bit, what can happen is when you assemble your piece, a sharp edge on your PVC can s scrape all of the glue and primer out of the way and cause it to not seal properly. So if you have this beveled a little bit, it'll cause it to slip over a lot nicer. Now sometimes you have to do multiple connections at once, but if you can avoid it, doing them one at a time is definitely your best best bet. Some guys claim there's an order to which side you should put the glue on first. Personally, I do not think it really matters. So, so you can see we've got a good bit of primer exposed there. My coworker would probably say that this is terrible. If you just see a little bit right on the edge, that's what looks the best. This is obviously in a trench and it's all gonna be buried. If you're doing this in a place where you're gonna see it all the time, you might wanna just pay a little bit more attention and make it look as pretty as possible. So you saw how I was holding it there? You gotta hold it for several seconds, otherwise it'll actually push itself off, which is super interesting. All right, let's do our opposite side here now. The interesting thing right now is that we actually have not very much flexibility with this pipe that's laying down here. I'm gonna have to lift it up a little bit like that and push it on there. And you rotate it a little bit as you push it on there. You don't need a whole lot though. And rotating it will make it so that it uh, just seals up any voids that might have been in the pipe. Another thing to pay attention to is where your words are right here. If you don't want to see them, make sure you face them away from you. Some guys are super picky about that. So just make sure you don't dump your cans of glue and primer out and you'll be a happy camper. One more thing to keep in mind is the type of PVC that you are using. Standard Schedule 40 solid PVC is what you want. But you have to watch out because there are some similar looking pipes that you can get from wherever you're getting your PVC that is technically not a solid PVC. It is a cellular core and it basically is soft right here. You can actually push and scratch the inside right here where this is cut if it is a cellular core. The other thing you'll notice is the pipe is actually lightweight as well. And that actually brings me to one more type of pipe that you want to avoid inside of a building 
is sewer pipe. Now this isn't the proper example, but this is just a thin wall PVC pipe. And this is something that you do not want to use underneath your slab. Uh, you need to have solid Schedule 40 PVC underneath your slab. I think technically the cellular core might be allowable, but I just still would avoid it. It's just not worth it in my opinion to save a few bucks and put in something that's lower quality under a slab that's gonna be permanent. The building sewer ends one foot outside of the building footing. So let's just say right over here, the edge of this trailer is the edge of our building and we have our thin wall sewer pipe. Our thin wall sewer pipe would come up to right there and then our solid PVC would hook up to it right there. Now, typically that would be a four inch pipe, a four inch sewer pipe going out. So just a couple more details uh, with the types of materials you choose. As always, I will link to all the different tools and products that you might run into in the description of this video. So feel free to check those out. We've got one last area right over here. This is another sink over there. You can see we've got our water lines and our rope coming up over there from our sleeve. And then one more emergency use floor drain right there. Finally, these go all the way down to the end wall. And this is one other thing I wanted to mention really quick is that you want to consider adding a clean out right near the exit of your building. So the way you would do this is you would have a Y 45 coming up that would allow you to clean out the pipe going out and you can even do back-to-back -back clean outs where basically one set is going this way and one set is going that way but typically with a new installation just putting standard clean outs right here going out is totally adequate now you can put the clean outs on the inside right here or you can do them right on the outside of the building and that's what this particular installation is going to be. The cleanouts are going to be outside instead of inside the building. So right over here outside of the building, those two cleanouts will be standing up right here instead of on the inside. And that's just because of some equipment and stuff that's going to be sitting inside the building. It makes more sense to put it outside. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you guys want to continue learning about plumbing stuff, I'm going to put a couple plumbing videos here on the screen. A lot of times we do a lot of electrical focused videos, but it's kind of fun uh, doing a few plumbing ones for you guys as well. So let me know down in the comments section. Do you guys have any other thoughts about this? And we'll talk to you guys right over there.